Hello everyone, welcome to the Engineering, Computation and Instrumentation third lab. Today, I will talk about data conditions and controls. Let's start by giving a brief introduction about conditions in C++ programming. C++ programming supports the usual logical conditions from mathematics. So, if we have two variables A and B, we can compare the values of these variables. So, we can check if A is less than B, or A is less than or equal B, or A is greater than B, or A is greater than or equal to B, or A is equal to B, or A is not equal to B. We can use these conditions to perform different actions for different decisions. C++ has the following conditional statements. We can use the if statement to specify a block of code to be executed if a specified condition is true. We can use else to specify a block of code to be executed if the same condition is false. If the condition in the if statement is false, we can use the else statement to specify a block of code to be executed if the condition in the if statement is false. Also, we can use else if to specify a new condition to test if the first condition is false. So if the condition in the if statement, the first condition in the if statement is false, we can use else if to specify new condition to test if the statement of if condition is false. Let's understand more these conditional statements and let's start by if statement. As I said to you, we use the if statement to specify a block of C++ code to be executed if a condition is true. We, in C++, the syntax to write the if statement, we write if, and after that, we write after uh, our condition, then we open the bracket, and we write a block of code to be executed if this condition is true, and after that, we close the bracket. Note that if is written in lowercase letters. So if you, if you use our case letters, such as in this form or in this form, this will generate an error to you. So remember, if is written in lower case letters. Let's understand more the if statement through this example. In this example, we want to print hello world if the value of variable x is greater than the variable y. So our condition here is we want to check if x is greater than y. So if this condition is true, I will print on the screen hello world. So how can I write this uh, uh, code. Here uh, I am given the value of x and the, uh, the value of variable y and I will use the if statement to compare the values of variable x and the variable y. So I will write if x is greater than y and I will open the bracket. After that I will write c out hello world and then close the bracket. Here the value of x is 50, 50 and the value of y is 10 so x is greater than y so this condition is true, so uh, uh, our uh, compiler will print on the screen, hello world. Now, let's understand more the else statement. Else statement is used to specify a block of code to be executed if the condition is false. So how can we write it in C++? We start first by writing the if condition, and after that, I will write the block of code to be executed if the condition is true. What if this condition is not true, is false, so I will use the else statement. The else statement will, uh, uh, will execute a block of code if the condition in the if statement is false. Let's understand the else statement more through this example. Here, uh, you are given the value of time, and uh, based on this value, you will print something on the screen. So, if time is less than uh, 18, you will print good day. If time is greater than or equal 18, so we will print good evening. In this example, you are given that the time is equal to 20. So when I check this condition, I found that S20 is less than 18. No. So this condition is false. So what should I do? I will execute the code between the else brackets. So I will print on the screen good evening. Now let's understand more the else if statement. We can use the else if statement to specify a new condition if the first condition is false. So if we have more than one condition to check, so we can use the else, else if statement. 
So we start uh, uh, our uh, code by uh, writing our first condition using the if statement as normal. And after that, we can uh, write the second condition using the else if statement and so on. So in this uh, syntax, your compiler will check the first condition. If this condition is true, so the block of code between this, this if statement brackets will be executed. If this condition is false, the your compiler will proceed to check the second condition. If this condition is true, so your compiler will execute the, the, the code between the else if statement brackets. If this condition is also false, your compiler will execute the uh, 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 code between the brackets of the else uh, statement. For example, time here is greater than 10. So the first condition is false. So we, our compiler will proceed to check the LCF condition. Here, our time is also greater than 20. So this condition is also false. So our compiler will proceed to execute the code between the else bracket. So our result will be good evening. So good evening will be printed on our screen. But if the time was, for example, 14, so the first condition is also false. So we will proceed to else if condition. Time is 14, which is less than 20. So the second condition is true. So our compiler will execute the code between these two brackets. So good day will be printed on our. Now let's talk about the Boolean logical operators. The logical operators are used to determine the logic between variables or values. We have logical and, logical or, and logical not. Logical and returns true if both statements are true. So if these two statements are true, so the logical and will return true. The logical or returns true if one of the statements is true. So if only one statement of these two statements is true, so the logical or will return true. The logical not will reverse the result. Return is false if the result is true. So if these two statements are true, so the logical not will return false. Now let's talk about what is required from you in lab three exercise. Consider an LRT junction with four input tracks and one output track. The output track can handle only one train at a time. Therefore, the LRT junction will only clear one train for travel from all the trains on all the input tracks. Let's see how can we select which train will be cleared and which trains will be stopped. The input track with the highest number of trains on it is given the highest priority and will have one train cleared for travel. All other trains on that highest priority track and on the other tracks are stopped. For example, here we have in track one, four trains, and in track two, three trains, and in track three, two trains, and in track four, one train. So track one has the highest number of trains. So in track one, we'll have one train cleared and all the other uh, trains will be stopped. If equal number of trains exit on any input tracks, the following order of priority from highest to lowest is used. So we, if we have any, uh, 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 if we have two tracks have equal number of trains, so the priority is given to track with the highest order. So we have a, 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 a ascending order from uh, track four, track three, track two, track one. So in this example here, we have track one and track three have equal number of trains and they have the highest number of trains. So the priority here is given to track three as it has the highest order. So in track three, we will stop one train, we will clear one train, sorry, and all other trains will be stopped. If the highest priority track with the cleared train has four or more stopped trains, an alert is generated for that track. So after we clear one train from the highest priority track, we will check the number of train, not the number of remaining trains uh, in this track. So if the number of remaining trains in this track has number uh, uh, of four or greater than four, we will 
uh, uh, print out an alert. So in this example here, we have track one has the highest number of trains, which is five. So we will clear one train from track one. So the, rem the, the remaining number of trains in uh, uh, track one will be four. So we must produce an alert here. Also in this example, we have track two and track four have the highest number of trains and uh, uh, they are equal. A track two has five number uh, uh, of trains and also track four have has uh, has five numbers of uh, uh, trains. So the priority here is given to track four as uh, uh, it is ha it has the highest order. Okay, so we will clear one train from track four and we still have four trains in track four. So we must reduce an alert. So you are required to write a C++ program that asks the user to enter and then read in the number of trains on each input track. So at first, you will ask the user to enter the number of trains on track one using the C out object. And then you will read this value using the C in object. And after that, you will ask the user to enter the number of trains on track two using the see out object and then read the value that the user will enter using the cn object and so on for track 3 and track 4. Remember, in order to be able to use the see out and the cn object, you must use the preprocessor directive hash include input output stream at the top of your code. After that, you are required to compare the number of trains on each track to determine which train will be cleared yeah so remember we will clear the train from the track with the highest number of trains and if we have two tracks uh, with uh, equal number of trains uh, the priority is given to the track with the highest order okay so if i want to ask you what is the possibility to uh, uh, clear one train from track four you will tell me that we can clear one train from track four, if the number of trains of uh, uh, track four is greater than or equal uh, uh, that in track one, and greater than or equal that in uh, track two, and greater than or equal that in track three, so this will be your first condition. Okay, I will I will check this condition. If this condition is true, I will clear one train from. Uh, 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 track 4 and stop all other trains in track 4 and track 1 and track 2 and track 3. We want to from you also in this uh, uh, F statement to check after you clear one uh, uh, train from uh, 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 track 4 in this example. We want to from you to check the number of stopped trains. If, if, this, uh, if the number of stopped trains in track 4 is uh, are greater than or equal four, you will print out an alert. So this this will be the code that will be executed if the your if your first condition is true. So what else if this if this condition is not true? So the, there will be other possibilities. We will have maybe we maybe will we will clear one train from a uh, 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 track uh, three. What is, what are the possibilities? of clearing one train from track three. We will clear one train from track three if the number of trains of track three are greater than or equal that in track one and greater than or equal that in track two and greater than that in track four. Remember, I don't, I don't tell you that greater than or equal track four as if track three has the same number uh, uh, of that in track four, the priority will be given to track four. So here, in this uh, second condition, uh, we will say that only if track three greater than track four. So if this second condition is true, your compiler will uh, uh, clear one train uh, 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 for, uh, uh, from uh, uh, track three and stop uh, all other trains. And the, as the same, uh, in, in the first condition, you are required to check the number of stopped trains in track 3. If they are greater than or equal 4, you will produce an alert, okay? And so on. We will follow the same way 
uh, we have another condition uh, 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 that uh, uh, will uh, uh, clear one train from track uh, uh, two, if this condition is uh, true, and we have our last condition that will clear one train from track one if uh, 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 our last condition is true. You remember, your output format must follow uh, the same output format in your lab manually. You must follow your output character by character. Remember that in order to get the full mark. I hope everything is clear for you now. Thank you.